The 1978 season got started early for the Paladins as they traveled to Columbia to renew an old rivalry with the University of South Carolina. It was to be a long night in williams Bryce Stadium as a much deeper South Carolina team wore down Furman and went on to take a one-sided victory on the scoreboard. But statistically, the Paladins played as well as the Gamecocks, and the coaching staff knew it was just a matter of time before the points would start piling up on the board. As it was, the high point of the night was a fine touchdown pass and a determined run by Mike Glenn from David Henderson, but it wasn't nearly enough, and Furman ends up a loser in their season opener. season home opener in Greenville against Carson Newman traditionally one of the top offensive teams in the NAIA and this year wasn't any exception Paladins got some points on the board early with a Keith Potter field goal and then a little bit later on Kent Werner ran well to give the Paladins yet another score in the second half sophomore tailback Mike Glenn did a good job tight roping down the sidelines with some help and some fine blocking starting to put some distance between the Paladins and the Eagles the emergence of Steve Bishop as a solid runner began to show up in this game. Bishop's performance and an unfortunate injury to Rodney Heights allowed Kent Werner to move to defense and shore up two positions in weeks to come. As it was, Furman comes out a winner over Carson Newman for their first victory of the year. Paladin lost a hard-fought ball game at Vanderbilt on a couple of last-minute miscues, but played well against a bigger and deeper team. And then it was the opening game of the Southern Conference season at Boone, North Carolina, against an Appalachian State team that showed signs of once again dominating the Southern Conference. But all the talk of dominance ended in a flurry of big hits and opportunistic plays by the Paladins as Furman took a 52-34 win over the Mountaineers. Hard hitting like this by Chris Bono in the Paladins secondary and alert play by Russell Gambrell recovered this fumble and got the Paladins a chance to put some more points on the board. David Kelly stopped a Mountaineer comeback a little later with a fine pass interception as the Paladins defense always managed to come up with the important play just when Appalachian was starting to move. David Henderson threw the ball extremely well, and the receivers like Jimmy Kaiser here gathers in one for a big game. And then there was this fine touchdown pass to Brett Simmons to keep the Paladins lead mounting. The specialty teams contributed a kickoff return for a touchdown and a takeaway here when Greg Ellis got to this fumble on an Appalachian State kickoff. And the Furman tailbacks ran well in the ball game. Mark Stowers gets across the goal line here. And Mike Glenn broke this big run down the sidelines to put the icing on the cake and give the Paladins their first Southern Conference win of the season, a 52-34 win on the road. Revenge was on the mind of the Furman team when Wofford traveled to Serene Stadium. Last year, the Paladins were stopped short in a last-minute drive, and the way the first half ended sure looked like a determined second-half effort was going to be needed to knock off the Terriers. In the second half, it started to come. Mark Stowers moved the Paladins into scoring position on this nice run. And then on the very next play, Stowers got the yard he didn't get on the last carry and gave Furman another touchdown. The passing game also started to open up. And in spite of a good rush here, David Henderson hangs in there and gets the ball to Jimmy Kaiser right on the money. If it wasn't passing, it was running. Mike Glenn gathers in a pitch, makes a determined run to the end zone. Glenn will go on to finish the year as the Paladins' top touchdown producer with 10. And then David Henderson, after the option opens up the defense, splits the defense with this run and walks right into the end zone to give the Paladins yet another score. Wofford came back and scored, but per Furman wasn't through with their scoring efforts. The Henderson to Greg Latch combination works for a long touchdown as the senior receiver beats all the Terrier defense into the end zone. The final Furman 36, Wofford 12, and another win for the Paladins. Week marked a trip to the Mini Dome in Johnson City, Tennessee. The Pirates of East Tennessee State had shown some strength with an early season win over Western Carolina, and the Dome Stadium provided a very different surrounding for the players. The Paladins' offensive blitz continued in the contest. Mike Glenn carried the ball well out of the backfield, and Ricky Hall added a score on the ground. And David Henderson again threw the ball well as Greg Latch gathers in this important pass for a first down. But the big story in the contest was the play of the defense, as outstanding sophomore defensive lineman Kevin Morgan makes a solid stop on this pirate, and the whole defensive unit, as the Paladins swarmed all over East Tennessee. Russell Gambrell, Kevin Morgan, and Bruce Lancaster, and the Paladins come out of the mountains with another win, the final Furman 35, East Tennessee State 14. Then it was back home to Serene Stadium in a showdown with University of Tennessee Chattanooga for the Southern Conference lead. Both teams had perfect Southern Conference records coming into the game. 
Furman broke on top early after recovering a fumble. Keith Potter contributes this field goal to give Furman the lead. The Mox got a score on a long pass, but that was about the only time they moved it. The Paladin pass rush led by Kent Warner, Ronnie Cox, and Richard Ingram harassed the Moccasins quarterback all day and sacked him several times. The Paladins' big play in the game came here. David Henderson moving around in the pocket while Jimmy Kaiser runs a perfect pattern and then keeps going after he gets the ball for the score. However, a couple of miscues took the Paladins out of the game, and the Moccasins prevailed 13-9. Annapolis Marshall Thundering Herd had the misfortune of being the next opponent on the Paladin schedule, and Furman got rid of some of their frustrations from the week before in the contest. David Henderson passed the Herd to death. He hit on three touchdown passes as Brett Simmons and Greg Latch combined for big catches, and after they caught the ball, they all blocked well for big gains upfield and touchdowns. Just watch a couple. Furman completely dominated the game. David Henderson passed for over 300 yards, hit a school record 12 in a row, and was named Southern Conference Player of the Week for his performance as Furman trounced the herd 42 to 12. Davidson was the next team to come to Greenville to take on the Paladins, and Furman's offense with big days like those against Marshall was starting to move up statistically in the nation. Jimmy Kaiser has played at quarterback, at running back, and as well as wide receiver for the Paladins. And on this reverse in the early part of the game, he rounds the corner and picks up good yardage, setting up a score. Mark Stowers gets this touchdown run to put Furman out in front. And then Ricky Hall chips in with a score, coming a little bit later behind some fine blocking in the offensive line. That offensive unit set a goal of 500 total yards for themselves in the contest, and with strong support from the line, like Hal Westlake, Steve Williams, and Ricky Young, the Palins accomplished that, setting school records for total offense, while Mike Glenn and Mark Taylor ran in for touchdowns. Davidson had been explosive on offense via the pass, but the Paladins' secondary and Chris Bono with this interception stopped the Wildcats' offense cold. The game was over well before halftime, and the final was Furman 56, Davidson 14, and the confrontation was set for the Southern Conference showdown in Cullowee, North Carolina, with the Catamount. Western Carolina had knocked off Chattanooga the week before, and that put Furman back into the title picture in the Southern Conference race when they took the field against the Catamounts. The workhorse on the day was Mark Stowers, who with his performance was named the Southern Conference Player of the Week. Stowers rushed for 159 yards on a school record 35 carries as the Paladins offense monopolized the ball and kept it away from the Cats. Stowers and the other running backs like Sandy Davis ran the ball hard, inside between the tackles, and the center of the Paladin offensive line made the difference. Ricky Young, Stan Stanley, and Scott Sellers made the big plays and handled the quick cat defensive front. All the game, the defense made big plays too, and this batted pass and interception by Steve Botkin ended the last Catamount scoring threat and preserved the win as Furman won their seventh game of the year, 24 to seven, and moved back into contention for the Southern Conference title. The last week of the season was homecoming, and the Citadel, traditionally the toughest foe the Paladins face, was the opponent. It proved to be a typical Furman Citadel game, up and down for both clubs. David Henderson and Jimmy Kaiser hooked up on a solid completion here, and then Steve Bishop, again behind fine offensive line blocking, ran in the score. Citadel moved out in front, but a good pass completion later from Henderson to Kaiser, and then another fine run by Mark Stowers put Furman in front once again. A Keith Potter field goal and a solid defensive stand made the difference and helped the Paladins to their eighth win of the season. And with Western Carolina's loss to Appalachian State, a share of the Southern Conference crown with Chattanooga.